So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure main stage so that main stage objects like these can directly influence what preset you're focused on inside of your DMXIS software. DMXIS software allows you to control a DMX universe of stage lighting right from your computer. And here is what DMXIS looks like. We are currently in the preset manager of DMXIS, and you can see it's got banks one, two, and three, and each bank has a collection of presets. And I'm going to be working just in bank two for this example, but to show you what I've built and how it functions, here is main stage. And we have a simple concert setup. We've got a patch list on the left, and I've got some MIDI activity lights here that helped me for troubleshooting purposes. I have a panic button, which is also for troubleshooting purposes. And I set up two example drum pads. And uh, in this example, I'm only going to be working with the preset drum pad. but. The way it works is if I'm on song one inside of main stage and I hit preset, it's going to focus on song one's preset. And if I jump down to song three and hit the same preset button, it's going to select preset three in DMXIS. So just to go through the full workflow. So uh, there's a lot of theory to cover in being able to get this functioning the way I did it. Between these two programs, uh, MainStage and DMXIS, there is a bridge that allows them to communicate. And that bridge is called Audio MIDI Setup. You have to open Audio MIDI Setup on your Mac and make sure you're looking at Show MIDI Studio, which is Command 2. And in this window, you need to open up IAC driver and make sure that you have a port configured. And you should only have one port. I've found that having two ports in here or more has been uh, pretty difficult to manage in the scope of this project. And you want to make sure that the port is online. So create a port. If you don't have one already, click this plus sign, name it whatever you want, and then make sure that this checkbox is checked off. If you've configured an IAC port, then when you're working in main stage, uh, you will be able to see that IAC driver port as an available option when you're selecting MIDI out inside an external instrument channel strip. On the DMXIS side, you want to configure the IAC driver before opening up DMXIS. And when you go into DMXIS's preferences, you'll see the IAC driver port as an available option under active MIDI inputs. And you want to make sure that that is checked off in DMXIS. So uh, let's talk about DMXIS really quick. Um, all of the controls in DMXIS uh, can be MIDI learnable. So if you select this fader here and you right click it and select learn, you can move a control on a physical MIDI controller. And as long as it's plugged in and they can see each other, that physical MIDI control will be able to manipulate this fader. And the same goes for all of the hardware buttons, all of the hardware knobs, faders, and um, even this button here, which allows you to cycle through the different presets. Now, DMXIS also allows you to use MIDI to jump straight to specific presets and specific banks, but there's a difference. You can't use MIDI CC data to jump 
to these different presets, you have to use MIDI notes. And the way that works is like this. Uh, let me pull up an example keyboard here. So here's a visual keyboard and uh, 25 keys, but consider this the lowest note on your MIDI controller. The lowest note for MIDI controllers is technically C negative two. This is the C note, but this is negative two. This would be C negative one, and the next C up here would be C zero. So the lowest possible note is C negative two. And if you pass a C negative two value to DMXIS on MIDI channel 16, it's going to select the first preset in the list. If you pass the second lowest note, which is C sharp negative two, it's going to select the second preset in the list. And you can go up chromatically in the scale D negative two will select the third preset and D sharp negative two will select the fourth preset. And again, this is if you're passing those note values to DMXIS on channel 16. And you can control which bank to focus on in DMXIS in the same manner, but instead of passing these chromatic notes on MIDI channel 16, the bank side of DMXIS is listening for those notes on channel 15. So now let me show you what you need to do to be able to get this to work. Bear in mind that these up here are actually drum pads because again, DMXIS is looking for MIDI note values. Uh, you can't, for instance, accomplish this same behavior using the button object in main stage. Here's a what a button looks like, and here's what a drum pad looks like. And the reason, again, being that if you tried to do this with a button, buttons can pass MIDI CC values, but not MIDI notes, and drum pads can pass MIDI notes, but not MIDI CC values. All right, so here's one of the first gotchas, and this is kind of a complex process. So there are quite a few gotchas, and if I forget any of them, I apologize. So when you configure the IAC driver, it's considered a MIDI destination or a MIDI controller, if you will. And if you have at least another MIDI controller aside from the IAC driver, then you need to be very, very careful with main stage. For instance, these buttons here, I'm probably going to be mapping to another MIDI controller. Uh, any main stage object that is going to be interacting with another MIDI controller and not IAC, you need to make sure that their MIDI port value is not set to all. If there's at least one object in your entire main stage project that interacts with a different MIDI device, not IAC, you have to make sure it's not set to all for MIDI port or else you're gonna start some sort of feedback loop because the way the IAC driver works is uh, you can send MIDI information to it, but any MIDI information it touches, it repeats and sends it out. And basically, you're going to create a MIDI loop situation, which is going to spike your CPU and make your main stage project unstable. So you have to make sure any objects that aren't intended to interact with the IAC driver, configure it accordingly, and you should be able to avoid that issue. So this solution uses the IAC driver and the way you get main stage talking to the IAC driver is through an external instrument channel strip. 
and unfortunately external instrument channel strips need to be applied on a patch level you can't just set one up on a concert level and expect to be able to access that strip from the different patches and the different sets so it's a per patch solution here so let's add an external instrument for MIDI input I want to change it to none for MIDI output I want to change it to the IAC driver and I only want to pass this information on channel 16 which is what the presets in DMXIS is looking at once you have the new channel strip configured like this go ahead and click create and it will add a new channel strip in this patch let me just drag it over here and I'm going to name it DMX IS preset all right so here's another gotcha um, go ahead and click on the channel strip that you created and you want to make sure that under MIDI input again make sure that the input is set to none and you want to filter out all of the pitch bend information sustain pedal modulation expression and aftertouch if you don't filter that out I've found that main stage passes these values to IAC and IAC outputs those values and then you create another MIDI loop. So you need to make sure that these are checked off. Now that I've prepared an external instrument channel strip, I want to add this channel strip to all of my other songs or patches in my project. So I'm going to select the channel strip copy it, go into another patch, and paste. And I'm just going to repeat that for all of the songs I've got. Now let's go back to song one, and we want to select the preset drum pad. And here, under unmapped, we will see the channel strip that we created. We want to select it. We want to click into MIDI notes and you want to scroll to the very bottom and select the very lowest note and it should be c negative two and here's a third gotcha if you don't see c negative two and you only see c negative one as your lowest midi note then you need to go into main stage preferences command comma and click into the midi tab and you want to see what you have for display middle C. If it's set to C4, which I was partial to because I learned growing up that C4 was middle C when I learned to play piano. Um, unfortunately, DMXIS does not agree with you and DMXIS perceives C3 as middle C. So you need to have C3 selected and if you made this change, then you may not see the change reflected in this list down here. And you may have to save your project, exit out, and come back. But if you do that, you'll see C negative 2 as the lowest possible MIDI note. So you select the preset drum pad, go into the DMXIS channel strip you created, go into MIDI notes, scroll down to the bottom and select C minus two. For song two, you're gonna repeat the process, click on the drum pad, click into the channel strip, MIDI notes, scroll down to the bottom and select the second lowest possible MIDI note. And for song three, it's gonna be the third lowest possible MIDI note. And then song four. The fourth lowest possible MIDI note. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. And 
and that looks good. And that's how you configure main stage to select different presets in DMXIS based on what patch you are focused on inside of main stage.